it going guys? Welcome back to another episode of How To. In this episode, I'm going to be showing you basics of building a stable platform. Now, this is the way I do it, and this is going to be with no logic. So, not to say that we don't use some of the blocks in the logic tab, but we're going to do this with no logic. So, first thing we're going to grab is a seat. So, I'm going to grab an armored seat. Actually, I'm not going to grab an armored seat. I'm going to grab the diving bell because it's got connection points on all sides. <clears throat> Excuse me. So with connection points on all sides, that gives us access to evenly balancing. So grab a couple of basic blocks, slap them onto the sides like this. Now with that, it's even weight distribution all the way around. So what I'm going to add next, what I this is the way I build. There's a lot of different ways to build. I'm sure there's other videos out there that uh, tutorials that'll show you how to use logic, how to build everything with all kinds of wicked controls. This is actually a wicked way to start a basic build. Uh, anything from a helicopter to you could put this in a car if you want for stabilizing. It's usually meant for flying things or things that are going to be hovering, uh, so that you don't have to constantly be worrying about trying to keep it balanced. So what we got here is a speed sensor, and we're going to be facing it downwards. Now I'm going to put one of these on all four corners. Copy those back. Now we want to select all of these. And go to our configure tab. We want to set the speed down to 0.1, which is the lowest it could go. Hope it can stay the same. And we also want to double check, make sure that they're all individually set and that it didn't set one and skip the rest, which you will sometimes do with pistons or servos if you're trying to uh, adjust it or configure numerous components at the same time. So now that we've got those facing down, those won't do anything because we have nothing to connect them to. So the simplest way for me to show you how these stabilizers work or to build something like this would be to, well, I mean, let's even go with mini thrusters. We'll just stay away from the gimbals altogether. I want to make it too easy. So we'll set a couple of small thrusters, one on each corner. Again, we want to keep it as wide as possible so it gets as stable as possible. Select those two, we'll copy them over to the other side. Now, again, this is important. We want to uh, make sure that we have each sensor here connected to the corresponding thruster, which is facing downwards. We'll select configure, select that thruster. Select this one, select that thruster this one and so on now those are set like that so without any configuring and nothing all we did was lower the speed on these speed sensors to 0 0.1 so basically when it tries to fall it's going to engage these thrusters and it should engage it evenly because it's evenly distributed let's build it in and see what happens Ooh, see that fell nice and slow so, we still have control of our thrusters with space. And as you can see, as soon as it drops, I can hold the space bar. I can tilt forward with the seat or back, tilt to the left or to the right. But you got to remember that those speed sensors only work straight down. So, this is where our angle sensors come in to stop us from tilting and rotating and flopping all over the place. Let's we'll see if we can get... Uh, uh, come out, come out. See, that's another good reason to use a diving bell. But your thrusters don't work underwater, so... Ha ha! Alright, so now we're going to go back into build mode. And we have these perfectly convenient little spots here for angle sensors. So, I'm going to put one right in there. Copy one right over the other side. Now, setting these puppies up. Pretty straightforward if you're rotating, stopping the rotating from, like, forward and backwards. Uh, and it'd be the same thing, setting it up, putting one on the front and one on the back if you want to stop the uh, rotation side to side. So we'll select that, we'll go to configure. I always set the width to 170 to start, so it's not completely 180 degrees, it gives you 10 degrees of freedom to move rock back and forth a little bit. <clears throat> and we set our direction to 90 degrees. Now, as you'll see on here, the little blue section moved to the left hand side. and that's where it's going to trigger when it hits that blue. So we just want to make sure that the sensor on the other side has this side, the right side, has the blue on it. So we can set that up the same way, 170 degrees in 
same width, 90 degrees for direction. And now we can see that. See how see how it's the blue is on the back, the same as the other one. With this selected, right, we can just hold down left Alt, bring up, and we can simply rotate our axis so that the blue is on the other side. So we got blue on the front, blue on the back on that side. And now we just figure out. So this is going to hit the blue when it, when the whole bot rotates backwards, it's going to go into the blue. So as it's going backwards, we actually want it to trigger the thrusters in the back to stop us from rotating backwards. So we'll select these two back here, deselect, and select this one. This angle sensor is set when it rolls forward, it'll hit the blue. So we want it to stop us from going forward. So we will hit select these two thrusters in the front. Nope, let's do a quick test of that. Get space up into the air. Let's try rolling forward and backwards. As you can see, it engages those thrusters. So that we don't actually Again, concept build here. Okay. So that's the basic gist of that. Now, see, with thrusters, you're going to get spurt, 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 spurt. So it's going to keep rocking you back and forth. And this is where your helicopter engines come in handy. Build mode. So if we were to use servos rather than these thrusters for keeping balance, let's try that. We'll take a couple of the version 2 engines. Now this is where it's going to get a little tough because we want to make sure we actually only need one. Because we can do, if we have two sensors, we can have the servo spinning forwards or backwards to counteract the spin. But because that's not going to make it very symmetrical. See that's one nice thing about these angle sensors is we don't have to worry necessarily about symmetry anymore because we have angle sensors can detect and level us regardless of where the weight is distributed. So we'll put those two up there like that. Now with helicopter engines, we want to select them and remove any of the controls that are already on them. We can leave the speed at five, that's fine. If you don't remove the controls when you try and fly it, you're gonna have weird behavior because your WASD controls are actually gonna be spinning those servos. <clears throat> and the only time we want them to spin is when they're being activated by these angle sensors. So this one here is our don't go forwards angle sensor. And we know that this helicopter engine is going to spin backwards by default, which is going to give us forward torque. So we don't want to go forward. This one is the backwards one, so we're going to select that far servo. Now this is where it gets kind of weird because this one here is for our when we rotate forward so we want it to tilt us back. This one here will rotate backwards which will rotate us back. Alright, let's try that. A lot of this is trial and error because sometimes it's weird. Sometimes you have to trigger it on the outside depending on how you have it set up. If it's just a little sliver of blue or if you have a whole blue section. Well, let's try this and see how this works. So hit B space up in the air. So you can see how the helicopter engines actually give more stability than the actual thrusters themselves. Right? I can rotate all the way over and the helicopter engines have enough torque to literally upright you and, and set you upright. See I'm trying to go forwards right now to flip over upside down. And it will uh, it's pretty floppy. Pretty floppy. See, let's try disconnecting the thrusters from the angle sensors. So that it is just the helicopter engines that are controlling our stabilization. Alright, let's check that out. So, now you can see how this is still flopping back and forth because our uh, as soon as it starts moving back and forth our angles or our speed sensors facing down want to counter the 
helicopter engines are trying to keep us level. So let's go back to our spawn point here and actually set our... Let's try setting our helicopter engine speed to 10. Let's see what that does for us. Build. Jump in. Okay, now we get the hyper. Yeehaw! Now it'll spin you right around. These things have a lot of torque. So we know that that's too fast. Five was kind of rocking us a bit too much as well. But the problem is, is that there's, there's weight and once it starts swinging, it wants to continuously swing. So this is where I use other helicopter engines to counter the torque of the rotating and we'll actually see how that affects everything by doing this. So I'm simply going to add a helicopter engine on this side. I'm going to copy it over to this side, which is going to reverse it. So another opposite rotation. I'm going to select them both. I'm going to go up here, select the green arrow, make that number one, and I'm going to make it toggle. Remove the control from the red arrow, and I'm going to set the speed to 10. So those aren't anything I'm going to control. As soon as I get into the, the creation, I'm going to push number one. Those are going to automatically start spinning in the opposite directions. Let's see if it helps with our rocking motion and gives us some stability. So, as you can see, oh, 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 we didn't, uh, we didn't uh, gear down our original helicopter engines here. Yeah. Let's make those, let's try, yeah, we'll set it at five. We know that it was still doing some rocking action at five, so we'll set it at five. We'll jump in, hit space. See, it still wants to do the rocking back and forth thing. So let's hit number one, see if that helps. Imagine that. As you can see, it stops because it has to counter the torque of those counter spinning heli blades or helicopter engines. So again, I'm trying to lean forward right now and it's actually fighting it a lot. So five seems to be a good uh, level. So we are tilted forward a little bit. So you can see that we're actually moving forward a little bit here. So the extra helicopter engines that I just added will stop me from rotating forwards and backwards because they're on that axis. If you want to stop yourself from tilting back and forth this way, you would put a helicopter engine on the back like that, and you would copy that one there to the front, and then again you just select them both and put it on number one, same as the other ones, toggle, don't forget to toggle now, take the control off the red, crank that up to 10, build that into the world, go up in the air, see how floppy it is and stuff, see now we barely got enough lift to even get off the ground because we got enough weight on here. So we're going to hit number one, bang. See, I call it a skylock because it's almost like a uh, superconducting magnet over top of a magnetic in a magnetic field. You can literally change the angle of it and it'll stay locked in that position, regardless of its orientation to the ground or anything else. So you can see there's no it doesn't wobble anymore. It doesn't really go up anymore either, but so same thing if you wanted to control your steering left and right. You would put one on the top and on the bottom, set them to number one, and uh, you would have stabilization on all three, which is basically what the three-axis gyro is. So you could build one yourself, uh, just have two going on all three axes, set it to the same control, and then you have a basic core for uh, even in vehicles, helicopters, anything like that, if you want some kind of stability. Right, put one on the top and the bottom here. And it's usable for just about anything. You can put it in hovercrafts. Uh, it's a little big. It's harder on the smaller ones. But then if you only need certain axes stabilized, then that's uh, that's where I'd put the helicopter engines. And again, these speed sensors facing down are simply to keep you in the air. Uh, it's like an auto hover mode, basically. No logic or anything required. And you can still use the thrusters using the space bar. And that's basically the basics of it. Stabilizing any creation using the helicopter engines. As long as you've got two spinning in the opposite direction, it'll stabilize you in that direction. Just set it to anything that's not any of your controls. 
and uh, it should help you a lot. The heavier your craft gets, the more... <clears throat> sorry. The weaker the effect of the stabilizers is going to be. So, you simply add more stabilizers or more helicopter engines on those axes as you add weight to your creation or length or width or whatever it is that you're trying to stabilize. As the weight moves, you want to add some more of these to counteract that extra weight. And uh, that way we don't necessarily always have to build... Uh, you know, everything that's weighted in the middle and uh, symmetrical all the way around. So yeah, I think I'll leave that there. Really hope that helped you guys out. It's actually really fun to build stuff once you know how to stabilize it. Gives you a little more leeway to make some some uh, really wild creations. Uh, especially helps with flying. Uh, I'm going to actually use this to try and build some new ornithopters. Should be interesting. want to thank you all for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And we will see you guys in the next one. Ciao.